Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have another excellent game to share with you on the white end specialized version of Leela Night Odds. Trained specifically to play without a knight. No king knight for this game. Up against Grandmaster Alex Lenderman. Okay, this is a serious time control in my opinion. Rapid 15 plus 10. Bishops opening on board. I guess we can still call it this without a king knight. Let's see how Leela once more manages to stir up trouble. I must admit, these games I find interesting and instructive. Instructive in a couple of ways for my own game. Uh, for one, I'm normally not one to play where I give away any material. Uh, Gambit play isn't my preference. But when we're seeing example games like this, where Leela without a piece to start still manages to beat a very good opponent, it's kind of like, okay, who cares anymore about pitching a pawn or two? Also, a more positional note now, these games are providing us examples for how we can sideline enemy pieces. Just take them out of the equation. And this is done all while being down a piece. It's really interesting to see in action. Okay, black in this game goes after the light square bishop. This move here, f5, this shows up quite a bit in these Lila games. Not this exact move, but this general idea to plant a pawn in black's camp on the king's side in this case. Black preps d5, and white says now or never on this capture. You don't take now, it's preserved, and the knight looks foolish. So now's the time to take. Got to take away from the center, but that's okay. Uh, okay, white has doubled C pawns, but has an inch. Has gained an inch. Has a half open file to work with. We're going to see that this pressure on D6 eventually causes black to make some awkward moves in order to defend. First, it's castles. Queen of three. King H8. All right, what's that one about? Well, black is already anticipating this idea of g4, g5. Black's getting in position for rook g8 and a timely g-pawn advance. Okay, notice the timing of this g4 move. Leela is not so quick to make this committal uh, advance. A couple strengthening moves are first flicked in. First with b3, things are cool on the queen side, c4 secure. And also king h1, off of an open diagonal, also g1 vacant for the rook. Okay, finally we are ready to now go with g4. Black continues here with knight d7, plays within the structure, tries to hold up the g5 idea by unmasking this battery. Now if black tries to play in a more energetic way, with let's say d5. This is the recommendation by Stockfish, preparing to meet g5 uh, moving forward with the capture on e4. Uh, I want to give you a taste for how play may develop if this was the try, going with d5. White in this position would not be taking on e4. Uh, you take on e4, this would allow a queen exchange after queen d4. We could probably see queen g3. Here And this is maybe uh, a position Leela would shoot for. One that is still somewhat controlled. Let's say c5 here and bishop to e3. I'm not making the very best moves here, but just to illustrate, here's a situation where this extra piece is still somewhat of a non-factor. Even if it gets on this uh, main diagonal, it's blocked by a pawn. And I believe a position like this, there's time to still inch a bit closer to the king, forming a trio like this. Not going to feel too comfortable, that black king facing a uh, fifth rank pawn trio. And even though this is a half-opened position, I would not put it past Leela to maybe go forward with a king walk at some stage towards the queen side. This is maybe an approach for Leela in the event of d5. Okay, in this game, we have no d5. It's knight d7. Now we have bishop e3. 
A6, tough to wrap my head around A6 exactly. Maybe at some point B5, I guess Rook A7 in some cases. Might be purposeful to have some lateral defense. Okay, from here, Rook G1, we're ready to go with G5. That idea is cut out. At the same time, D6 now lacks an efficient defender. Pinpointed straight away. There go the dark square bishops. Queen defends d6, but this knight now kicked to a not so fun square. That's a fiend kettled knight. Black is not really playing with this knight or rook. From here, rook g3. f6 met with g5. The g file will be cracked open. Black pretty much uh, needs to take here. This is the best move. In the computer's eyes, if you don't take, and let's say you try to carve out a square for the knight with a5 here, yeah, this is looking a bit too scary. This would already be considered equal. Ideas of a sacrifice on h3. This pawn has uh, been allowed to go a bit too far. So best is to take the move in the game. Rook takes, maintaining the queens. And now we have this idea of a5, getting this square for the knight. b5 is the reply. White's doing similar, carving out a square uh, for the knight on d5. Black takes on b5. And pop quiz here. How would you respond as white? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, Leela says, mission accomplished. I got what I wanted. Access to d5 whenever I want. Let's pivot now towards the king's side. There's now a mate in three threat. Black is not attentive to this. Let's say it captures on a4. Here's the mate threat. Capturing on h7. Check on h3. And in the end, we have mate. We could see with the variation like this, the strength of this invasive pawn taking away a key square. Okay, black is attentive to this mate in three threat plays g6 here. Now we have a sacrifice. A check on h3. Rook g1. Gotta defend g6. Queen defends it. Knight d5 is played here. You can't capture on g6. You're not just winning uh, the queen. Keep in mind, you would end up losing your queen in the end. So this f pawn in this position is pinned to the queen it's knight d5 here and the response is queen f7 after queen f7 it turns equal uh, the best move here is rook h8 but if you're going to play rook h8 you have to be prepared to give up a full rook leela could respond here with a capture and this position right here could surface which could still end up being a bit tricky for black. For one, you can't take. You get mated. And let's say you improve the knight. There's a mate threat. How are you defending against that? Let's say you go with the rook. There's rook g5. Another mate threat is in the air. Let's say black takes on a4. This would be the mate threat. You ready? g7. Attracting the rook to this square. So that way, after this check, the king could not run. Got a block. Rook takes rook for mate. Any other variation to try and complicate? Let's say the king blockades. Well, maybe we have this check. Possible repetition. King on these two, knight on these two. Maybe you go for more? Targeting the bishop and the pawn? Who knows? Still ways to complicate in this position. e5 pawn could fall. Okay. My point, it's still complicated. Even if you have the queens off. All right, in this game, what is tried? After knight d5, queen f7, pressure increased on g6, king f8. And after pawn captures pawn, even though this is still considered in Stockfish's eyes equal, Lenderman resigns. And I could understand why. Uh, it's a very difficult position for black. White is attacking with queen, rook, has a passed pawn, a monster knight. And I would not doubt 
that before the resign button was hit, Black looked at this knight here, the fiend Keto knight, and thought, oh my God, what am I doing? Totally out of play. Also this rook, a sad sight as well. The only way for Black to stay in this game, just to emphasize how difficult a position ahead it is for Black, the only way to hold this to equal would be to make seven consecutive only moves. Okay, good luck finding those seven consecutive only moves. The first only move here is queen to g7. If some active move like queen f2 is played, cutting out this idea to get on an open file, it would lead straight to mate. With g7 check, rook takes, queen h8, the rook soon falls, and a couple moves later, the king will fall. What are these seven only moves for black to stay in the game? This is what it looks like. There's number one, two, three. Number four would be a very difficult one. Bishop e6, allowing knight takes rook discover check. Number five, number six, and number seven. This here is still considered equal. If queen takes pawn here, check this out. After c3 preventing a quick king escape, black would now be in an only move situation. Has to sacrifice the queen for a pawn, believe it or not. <laughs> There's multiple mate threats after this c3 advance in this position. Chop on b5 with your favorite pawn followed up with queen c7, or even queen d7 to c7 for mate. Okay, a tricky path forward for black to be sure. Uh, Lenderman at this point simply threw in the towel after f takes g6. So what did you think of this game? Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.